We're here on two motions to withdraw as counsel, filed by Mr. Michelson and Ms. Kincaid. Uh, Mr. Albee's with us for the department. Ms. Ledbetter is with us for CASA. Ms. Grant is with us representing the children. Mr. Michelson is with us representing the mother, Ms. Ramos. Ms. Kincaid is with us representing the father, Mr. Gomez. Uh, Mr. Adams is with us representing an unknown father. <clears throat> Neither of the parents are here. So, Anna, I'm not sure we're going to need you, but if you if you wouldn't mind sticking around just a few minutes, uh, I've got the interpretation feature on in case the parents show up. But um, there's not much to this. I think I probably let y'all know. It's not so much that I may not let you withdraw. I just I was hoping the parents would be here so I could instruct them that this is not like Walmart. You don't go shopping for your lawyer. So, uh, but they don't usually show up, and they haven't today. Um, let, let's start, Mr. Michelson, first with you. Just tell me, I mean, I read your motion, it says you can't effectively communicate. What, what's the deal? Are, are they not, are you contacting them at all? I, I think everything centers on uh, January 22nd. I um, received the email from Amanda Burns, who uh, is the parenting uh, coordinator or facilitator. And um, she reached out to me and said that communication was a difficult part um, I told her I was withdrawing on that date because of uh, inability to communicate with them. And sh she said she wished she would have contacted me sooner so that we could have made arrangements um, to communicate with her. But she indicated communication is, a, is, is difficult uh, with them. So um, I guess my reason for withdrawing was, um, according to the CASA's um, uh, statements to the court administrator that someone from St. Francis had suggested that um, the clients fire their attorneys and get new ones. That was the basis of my uh, withdrawal. You're telling me St. Francis said that they should fire their lawyers? Uh, according to the CASA email to Haley, uh, CASA had said someone from St. Francis had told them uh, when they could, when uh, Mr. Dominguez and my client said they couldn't get a hold of us, that uh, they should get new attorneys. Well, I'd like to know who that is with St. Francis because they're way overstepping their bounds. But uh, I, I agree with that, and I think that um, I think uh, Evan Wyatt probably could give you that answer, but I see she's not here. Yeah. No, I, I would. I'd like to hear from Evan. I, I've got nothing but respect for Evan. Ms. Judge, she's here with me. Okay. Oh, there she is. Huh? Um. Yes. So our office used to be in the courthouse, but now it's across the street. And the janitor at the courthouse brought over the parents because they were told to come to the courthouse by their caseworker, their new caseworker, Valerie Sledge, to get a new attorney due to the fact that they cannot get um, a hold of their attorneys. And I had no idea what to do with that, knowing that Dallin County Courthouse is not where they needed to go for that. So right. I talked to Haley and explained what was going on. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask just very quickly, Ms. Kincaid, is it the same story with you? It's similar. And Your Honor, I, I used to have a translator on staff at my office. Uh -huh. um, and she moved on to a, a, a full-time job, which, you know, I'm happy for her, but now I have to contract someone out and it is someone that I, I trust and I use regularly, but now I can't just call them anytime or get my translator on the phone anytime. I have to schedule a time. And so yeah. I've reached out to him when I have my translator available and I understand he has a job, but what has happened is that he will call me with an individual by the name of Bianca. And she represents herself as a caseworker or a courtesy worker with the department. And I can't allow her to translate my conversations with my client, if, if that's what she is. Um, I, she's not in any of our filings, um, and so I'm not familiar with her. Um, so that, that's the issue I have, is that I can't allow someone that works for the department to translate my conversations with my client. And whenever I call with my translator, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Okay. Well, you know, I'm looking back. These two parents... I'm not, I don't have all of my notes, but I'm not, I don't know that they've ever even attended a hearing. So my question is the two of you, are they even trying to reach out to you? Or is it one of those things where, you know, you're telling me I've had no communication with my client. I, I'm just trying to get to the bottom. Is it, is it a language barrier or is it, they're just not, they're not participating. Your no, Honor, my, my client has attended. Um, I know that he attended the adversary hearing and he's attended at least one other hearing. 
he does call my office. So, I mean, he does try to get in contact with him or with me, but I can't allow, if it is a person with St. Francis to translate my conversations and I think it's upset him. Um, but I mean, I just can't do that. Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all withdraw. I don't want to put, I don't want to get you in a problem where you might end up having a grievance for that having done absolutely nothing wrong. So, uh, I wanted, I wanted them here so I could tell them you are not getting another lawyer. You better you better make do with what you get this go around because we don't we don't do that. We don't let you get, get a new lawyer every time you want one. So, yeah, somebody um, talking. Yes, Your Honor, it was uh, Evan. Um, there was also communication. Bianca is the what they call the family support worker is who she is, and she was under, she was told by the caseworker Valerie Sledge that St. Francis is not allowed to share the, the court Zoom links with the parents. And I had never heard that before. And I called Mr. Michelson and we had a discussion about it as well. I did send the parents the Zoom link for court this morning, okay. but Good. I sent it this morning and it was in English. So. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I obviously don't want anybody from St. Francis telling any parents to fire their lawyers if that happens. So uh, that's going to stop. And uh, Haley, are you with us? I guess Haley is not with us. Um, I'll have her send out an email to everybody involved in this case in case somebody talks to the parents who the new attorneys are going to be. And if anybody does communicate with them, workers from St. Francis, the department, whoever, be sure that they know that this, these are the last two lawyers they're going to get out of this court. So, okay, Anna, sorry to waste your time. We don't need you. Send us a bill. So, okay. All right, then. <clears throat> As I said, we'll notify you who the new, <clears throat> excuse me, who the new lawyers are. Our next scheduled hearing will be a permanency hearing on May 3rd, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online hearing. docket a day or two in advance. Mr. Alves is with exactly us for the department. We'll Ms. Ledbetter is with us for CASA. Mr. Turner is with us representing the child. Uh, Ms. Grant is with us filling in for Mr. Pirtle, representing the mother, Ms. Uh, Garcia, Star Garcia. She is with us. Mr. Taylor is with us representing the father, Damian Garcia. He is with us. That's everyone, all the parties. I have Lenore Aguirre, Heidi Combs, and Wendy Hooks Wells in the waiting room. Um, Heidi Combs is the St. Francis Ministries Permanent Specialist for this case today. You're, where is Ezra currently placed? In a foster home in Leveland. And how long has he been in that foster home? Um, since the beginning of the case, um, about a year and a half. And, and is that foster home meeting all of his needs? Yes, sir. Um, for the record, he was removed from Miss Garcia at birth, correct? Yes. And uh, are there any special is interest or special needs that this child has that we need to make sure that the court is aware of? No, sir. Um, child's mother is Star Dominguez. Yes. And Miss um, Dominguez was ordered to work some services. Yes. And uh, has she completed the services she was ordered to work? Yes, the only thing she still needs to complete is couples counseling. And do you know if she's attending couples counseling? Uh, they have not attended any this month. They have nine left. And uh, the last time that we had contact uh, with Miss Garcia, uh, she was in uh, Serenity in Plainview in a rehab. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is she still in Serenity in the rehab in Plainview? Uh, they got discharged yesterday. And do you know if that discharge was because she completed her program at Serenity or for any other reason? Because they completed it. They just sent me the certificates just a minute ago. Um, in, in the past, Ms. Dominguez or, or Ms. Garcia, excuse me, has completed rehabs and then tested after she's completed her rehab, she was tested positive for methamphetamines? Yes. Since she just completed Serenity at this time, do you have concerns about possible relapse? Yes. Do you believe that those concerns raise to a level that it would be dangerous to return Ezra to her care at this time? Yes. Um, 
and it would be contrary to Ezra's general welfare to return him to uh, his mother at this time. Yes. There's a final scheduled in this case. Is it next week or, or shortly, correct? Yes. Okay. Ezra's father is Damien Garcia? Yes. And uh, he and Miss Garcia were at Serenity together. And, and I think from your answers when I was talking about Miss um, Garcia, that he was also released because he completed the, the yes. program. Okay. Yes. He was also ordered to work services. Has he worked other services? He has uh, one pottery class left and nine couples counseling left. Again, do we have concerns that now that they're no longer in serenity and in a rehab facility, that they may have relapse issues? Yes. And would you agree with me then that it would be dangerous to send Ezra to Mr. Garcia today? Yes. And it would be contrary to his general wel welfare? Yes. Are you asking today for the court to continue the department as temporary managing conservator of this child? Yes. And that um, he continue in his current placement? Yes. There's been an issue raised about visitation. Currently, does Miss Garcia or Mr. Garcia have, uh, are they allowed visitation with Ezra? Not at this moment. When was the last time that they were allowed um, visitation? The end of November. And why was visitation stopped? Uh, positive drug screens. Ezra is very young. Um, how much visitation prior to the, the November stopped visitation did Miss Garcia and Mr. Garcia have with Ezra? Two hours. Were they exercising that two hour visitation? Yes. In your opinion, would it harm Ezra if he was not allowed visitation until we can have a final hearing in this matter? No, sir. Especially since that final hearing is scheduled very shortly. Yes. Because Mr. and Ms. Garcia have completed their serenity house, would you like to have a baseline um, level of uh, drug screens? Yes. Today? Yes, so sir. You are you asking the court then to order that we do a hair follicle and UA drug screen on Mr. and Ms. Garcia today? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Where would they go for their drug test, Ms. Combs? Uh, the place, the site in Lubbock. Are they in Lubbock? They're in Plainview. Plainview, okay. Yes, sir. If somebody could get me the name of the place before the hearing's over so I can put it, make it part of the order. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, then, um, Ms. Grant, questions? Briefly, Judge. Ms. Combs, you testified that the child was removed at birth. And pardon me for asking, but I'm filling in. I show the child was removed at six months of age. Mm -hmm. Yes, it might have been a six months of age. Okay, so so if, if if that's what I have, you have no reason to disagree with me, correct? Yes. Okay, and um, Serenity House is an acceptable location for rehab for parents by the uh, by St. Francis, correct? Yes. Okay, and so if they've completed that program and um, provided certificates, you consider that service complete at this point, correct? Yes. And you were asked a question about whether or not visitation would harm the child if it was not commenced. Do you recall that question? Yes. I'm going to ask the opposite question. Is there any reason why it would harm the child for the two hour visitation to resume? I still need a positive drug screen. I mean, a negative drug screen. 
So assuming a negative drug screen after the judge's orders today, is there any reason why that visitation could not resume in your opinion? Uh, yes, it's just not in the best interest of Ezra at this moment. How long has it been since the uh, parents had visitation? Since November. Okay. And they were, ex uh, were there any issues with the visitation as it was being exercised prior to the uh, going to serenity? No. And so, um, what would what would be the damage to the child to resume? Because we are seeking termination, and we just he's vulnerable, young and vulnerable at this time. Okay. Well, even if we uh, don't resume visitation, parents are sometimes allowed a goodbye visit. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you have any other reason outside of best interest why visitation would not be allowed? Domestic uh, violence issues. Okay. Could they visit separately? They have been visiting separately. Okay. So there's no domestic violence in front of the child during visitation, correct? Correct. Okay. Are there any other concerns that the parents need to address besides the couples counseling that you referenced that still needs to be completed? And uh, Damien needs to complete his last Padre class. Okay. And um, I show, and again, I'm filling in. And so I'm just, I've just read up, but I show that all the November visitation was complete and that the only visitation that was suspended is actually the month of December. Yes, ma'am. So the, we're in February, so they've only missed the visitation basically during the time they were in serenity and the week leading up, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and the couples counseling, are you aware that they have two left and those are both scheduled to be done in February and they've already reached out and scheduled those? I wasn't aware of that. Okay. All right. And you said no other service besides that couples counseling, uh, correct? Correct. For Miss for Miss Garcia, I apologize. Correct. I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Questions? Nah, we're having the same problem we had with him the other day. Judge, the testing facility in Lubbock is Lubbock Medical Solutions. Okay, thank you. And I I don't have my full file in front of me. Uh, I'm real confused about when the dismissal date is on this case. Can some is, does somebody have access to that? Yeah, um, um, June 22nd. Okay, that's what I'm showing. I'm sorry, Judge. What was it? June 22nd. And Todd, you said it was Lubbock Medical. What? Solutions. 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 Okay, thank you. Hello? Can you hear us, I Bill? I'm connected and I Bill? can hear you fine. I can't. Well, all right, don't touch yes, anything. I we we can hear you. Don't touch a, a thing. So now, do you, you have can any hear questions? me? Yes, Bill. We can hear you. Do you, have, yes, any do. Do you have any questions for Miss Combs? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Okay, yeah. go, go on. Yes, Your Honor, I do. Go on. Yes, Miss Combs. Uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel, you're completely breaking up. We can't hear you now. Miss Combs. Damien has pretty much also completed all of his services, the exception of the couple's counseling that, that they're in the process of completing. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So with the exception of the continued relapsing prior to entering serenity that they've just completed, pretty much completed all of their service plan. Is that correct? I guess. Now, the dismissal day on this is not until June 22nd. That's is correct. That That's, yes. we've, we've, we've already established that the dismissal day is June 22nd. You're breaking up so bad, Mr. Taylor. Only ask what you specifically have to ask today. I why you believe we need to proceed final on the 14th of February as a opportunity to show the okay. we're, we're going to be way behind. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'm going to go ahead and, and ask Mr. Turner if he has any questions. We can't hear you, Mr. Turner. Okay. 
Briefly, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Combs, how is Ezra doing in his placement? Are there any health concerns or anything uh, along that line? No, sir. Ezra is doing really well. He is uh, a bubbly little boy. He loves to play, and he's receiving speech therapy twice a month, so that's helping a lot. So developmentally, is he on target, moving toward being on target? Yes, sir. Um, how many, you stated that the parents have been in and out of rehab several times. Do you have any thing in front of you that tells you how many times they've been in and out of rehab? Three times. This um, will be the fourth. And they were discharged from Serenity. Yesterday, yes, sir. And so where are they currently living? In Plainview. Um, what is, are they living, do they have their own house? Are they living with someone in Plainview? Uh, Damien has his apartment. Um, as far as I know, Star still lives in Dalhart. She plans on moving to Plainview if she gets her her uh, probation transferred. Okay, in, in Plainview, living with Damien? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do either of them have employment at this time? Damien is working. Okay, where, where is he working? Um, I'm not for sure the name of it. Um, do you know how long he's been employed there? Three years. Okay. Um, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Alley, did you have any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. And, right. and Your Honor, we, we were just doing this as a permanency hearing because we have a short time before we right. were scheduled for a final. Right, sure. Uh, all right, Ms. Grant, did you have any witnesses? Your Honor, I would briefly call um, Star Garcia. And Your Honor, you can't see her anymore because her phone died. And so I believe she may be near Damien at this point. There. Okay. Yeah, there, there she is, Ms. Grant. Ms. Garcia, I have to do this in a question and answer format. You can't just do a narrative to the judge. Okay, ma'am? Okay. And you need to speak up. I can barely hear you. Okay. It sounds like perhaps the phone is no longer on speaker, Ms. Garcia, so you're going to have to talk really loud or check your audio. Okay. Um, Ms. Garcia, are you asking the judge today to go ahead and reinstate your um, visitation if your drug screens are all negative? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And did you hear testimony that the dismissal date on this case is not until June 22nd? Yes, ma'am. And so are you concerned that there is a final set prior to the dismissal date since you've just completed rehab? Yes. And so um, were you having any trouble with visitation prior to going to Serenity? No. And is it correct that the visitation that you've missed has only been while you were in Serenity Rehab? Yes. What plans do you have to remain sober at after your dismissal? Um, attend NA and AA and um, live group in our church and stay um, helping the community. Okay, so I understood you to say to attend, to attend NA and AA attend life group at your church and i didn't hear the third one ma'am and going to church and help the community going to church and help the, through, through the community thank you and is there uh you understand there is a motion in this case that's been filed by your regular attorney to reinstate visitation did did i communicate that to you and you understand that that motion may not be before the court today, but you're still asking if the court sees fit to go ahead and reinstate visitation if possible. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe it would be in Ezra's best interest for you to try to begin your visitation again and successfully complete this case? Yes, absolutely. And to your knowledge, if I asked Damian Garcia all the same questions that I've asked you today, would his answers be the same? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Garcia still lacks Padre and the couples counseling that you both have scheduled for February, correct? Yes. Thank you. Pass the witness, Judge. Right, thank you, Mr. Alvey. Any questions? Ms. Garcia, do you still have a motion to revoke your current probation pending? Um, yes, we have court on February 28th. But the judge said that the judge said it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I can't I can't hear what the judge says, Ms. Garcia. And are you subject on that motion to revoke to be going to prison? No. Your your probation, is it a felony probation? Yeah. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Turner, questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Taylor, I don't know if, if you can if you can hear us or sorry, we can't hear you, I don't think. Okay. 
Okay, you're still breaking up. No, so, no, no, okay, no, no, no. all right. All right, then, uh, does anybody else have any other witnesses? Your Honor, yeah. I would briefly call Damian Garcia. Go ahead. And Mr. Gar Mr. Garcia, did you hear all the questions that I asked Ms. Garcia during the pendency of this hearing? I did. And if I asked you all the same questions regarding your services, would your answers be the same in this case? Yes, ma'am. And are you scheduled to complete your Padre class? Yes, ma'am. I actually got uh, one of the ladies that was volunteering for the... Um, I can't remember who the lady was that uh, was originally doing it. She sent me an uh, um, she sent me an assignment one night, which was supposed to be my last one. But I got a call from her yesterday, which I seen just now when I turned on the phone after our release. And um, yeah, I should already be done because that was supposed to be the final uh, the final um, assignment. But uh, I'm willing to do whatever. I'm willing to do UAs once a week, whatever I have to do to prove my sobriety and, and get my son home. I'll go, I'll do whatever anybody asks. OK. And in this case, you know, were, did you hear the testimony of the June 22nd dismissal date? Yes, ma'am, I did. I, I do have that on paperwork. And you understand that a final is scheduled in this matter sooner than that? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. And do you have any concerns re of regarding reinstating your visitation as far as doing that visitation separately from Ms. Garcia? Um, I, I would like to have a joint visit, but whatever the whatever the court finds good. I know the last few months have been the biggest growth of our marriage, of our relationship. We've done a lot of counseling. Um, regardless of what the claims might be, uh, okay. we, we're doing excellent. Excuse me. You've okay. answered the question. I just need you to answer only the question you're asked. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. okay. And sir, if and you would, too, I'm sorry, Ms. Grant. If you would, yeah, remove, okay. your, remove your cap, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Grant. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Um, are you asking the court to go ahead and allow you to begin visiting with Ezra today separately until the couple's counseling can be completed? Yes, ma'am, I am. And do you believe that it's in the best interest of Ezra to allow you to visit with him? Yes, ma'am, I do. Are you, uh, and you understand there's another hearing scheduled for, to address visitation, but you're asking the court to go ahead and reinstate visitation today based on a negative UA and hair follicle following this meeting, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you understand that this is this is the fourth go around on this rehab and you have got to stay sober and get this complete in the best interest of Ezra. Uh, ma'am, I will have to say that that's only my second time in that rehab. I've only been to three my whole life. I went to one when I was 18 years old. Uh, okay. But th that's only the second time. Okay. So you and disagree with my wife. Thank you. So you disagree with the number of rehabs and this is your second attempt and you expect to be successful, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Judge. Pass the witness. Anyone have questions for Mr. Garcia? No, you're yes, not. Your Honor. Who? Mr. Turner? I, I have no questions, Your Honor. I don't know who said they did. So. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any other witnesses? No, Judge. Okay. Mr. Turner, recommendations. Your Honor, I would recommend that uh, the department be maintained as the conservator and that placement be continued. Um, I would not be in favor of visitation resuming at this point. Your Honor, we're days away from a final. Um, the uh, mom and dad were both just hours ago discharged from rehab. Um, would not be in favor of that, but would be in favor of mom and dad having to drug screen as soon as possible. Yeah, this this our next hearing is set in this case for next Wednesday, so we may not even have any drug test results back by then. So, okay, um, then Casa, Miss Ledbetter, anything to add? Yes, Judge, we're in agreement with uh, Mr. Turner. Um, we don't believe it's in Ezra's best interest to start visits right now due to the stability issues of the parents, um, and we would also like to see clean drug screens before that resumes. And um, with the final hearing coming up, that's also uh, a little bit worrisome to start visits right now. So we would just recommend that uh, Ezra continue in his placement. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I will continue the department's temporary maintenance and conservator. Continue Ezra's current placement. I'll order both parents to both hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Lubbock Medical Solutions in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Garcia, do you have transportation? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't miss those drug tests. Yes, sir. All right. As May I stated. Can I say one thing? Real quickly. Okay. Uh, our our two month clean sobriety day will be on the twenty first. So I'm sure that our hair follicles is going to be dirty. I don't. Wanna, I, we will... I, I don't. I don't want to hear. No, I don't want to hear any more from you. Okay. I don't want to hear any more from you. I know how drug tests work. So you got it. 
Okay. All right. This case is set for final at least now on February 14th. That's next Wednesday. It will be by Zoom like today's hearing, so parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket to see exactly what time for leave to intervene and a motion to strike that intervention. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the child. Mr. Jackson is with us representing the mother, Ms. Morrow. I don't show her in the waiting room. Mr. Hill's with us representing the father, Mr. O'Quinn. I don't show him in the waiting room. Mr. Hamker's with us representing the potential intervenor, Veronica Rodriguez. I do show Mr. Hamker and Ms. Rodriguez with us. I have, Judge. excuse me, I have Lenora Aguirre, Paula Mears, and Victoria Leonard in the waiting room. Do we need any of those in? Victoria Leonard. And okay. Paula Mears, Your Honor. Okay. Judge, we also have Amy with us now. Do you want me to yeah. stop the recording? I, I do. I need to stop the recording. And Judge, just for your information, uh, Ms. Morrow is in the, my office with Victoria Leonard, so she's present. Okay. Who is Victoria Leonard? My legal assistant. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, Ms. Morrow, the mother, is with us in Mr. Jackson's office. Mr. Hill, uh, were you expecting your client? I spoke to him yesterday, Judge. I do not expect that he will appear today, Judge. Okay. Okay. So, as I said, we had a petition, amended petition for leave to intervene filed by Mr. Hamker. Mr. Alvey filed a motion to strike that. Uh, and I've got a brief from the department. I've gotten several things from Mr. Hamker, and I can tell you right now, I have not, I've not been able to read those yet. I'm not in my office, could not print them. So I'm, I haven't read them, but I, I have read all the motions and the motion to strike. Okay, so um, Mr. Alvey filed the motion to strike, which, put, which puts the burden back with Mr. Hamker on his uh, petition for leave to intervene. Mr. Hamker, do you have witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, I'd call Veronica Rodriguez. And am I correct? You are the grandmother. Yes. And which one of the biological parents are you the mother of? Marina Morrow. All right. Let me uh, go back so that we can uh, fill in everybody a little bit about this case. Uh, it's my understanding that Jax was born on June 10th of 2023. Yes, sir. Were you in, involved in the pregnancy of your daughter uh, with respect to being able to advise her and console her during her pregnancy? Yes, the whole the whole time. Okay. And uh, you knew the father as well, correct, Mr. O'Quinn? Yes, not much, but yes. Okay. Um, prior to the, the delivery of the birth of this child, uh, how long had your daughter and Mr. O'Quinn known each other? Sure. Uh, I want to say months. All right. Like year now, maybe. the child was born here in Amarillo, Texas? Yes, sir. Okay. And when was the first time you were able to see the child? When he was born? <laughs> yes, on the day of his birth? Yes, the day of his birth. Okay. Now, it's my understanding the child... Uh, due to the drug habits of the parents, was was born and required to stay in uh, the hospital for a while. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. How long was Jax in the hospital? Um, in in the um, ICU, probably for about three weeks, three, okay. four weeks. Did you go up and see the child during that period of time? Every day. Okay. And when the child left the hospital, who did he go home with? With his dad, Austin. Okay. And how old is Austin, if you know? I think he's 22 or 23. I'm not sure. Okay. Did he have his own home or did he live with his mother? He had his, he was buying his own home. All right. Now, after his biological, the biological father took him home with him, uh, how often did you see the child? Um, Austin limited. So, I mean, I seen him. I tried to see him, you know, two or three times a week or so. Well, that man, so, I'm sorry, that, that wasn't his question. His, his question was, how many times did you see not tried to see him? Oh, um, when he got taken home, I often, um, I went to Austin's house. Austin brought him to us. Okay, so did were there times when Austin would let you take him home with you? Yes. 
was that at, at least sometime every week you got to take him home with you to care for him? Yes. That's It's my understanding that was Austin employed in his dad's body shop at that time? Yes. Okay. And um, this baby was just an infant at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. And then would you take the baby home uh, to Austin after he got off work or whenever he called to get him back? How did that work between? What kind of relationship did you and Austin have? Uh, sometimes I took him home or sometimes he would just pick him up. All right. And d during that period of time, uh, where was your daughter? She was with me. She was still living with you? She had her own apartment, but any time I got the baby, she was with me. Okay. She would come over and see her baby while you were taking care of her. Yes. Taking care of him, I should say. All right. yes. Now, how long, I mean, the baby, that was that like possibly, did this occur like in the latter part of June, the first part of July? Was this kind of contact with the tile taking place? Yes. Okay. And at some point in time, uh, did the child go back and stay with his father longer? No. So how long did this arrangement between the parents and you take place when you were taking care of the baby? Were you feeding it, bathing him, those type of things? Yes, he was in my home and I was taking care of him. Austin dropped him off and just never came back to get him. I, he was um, in his active use. And when you say active use, was was he, to your knowledge, was he still using drugs at that time? Yes, he asked me to take care of him for him until he got his life back together. He's going right. to rehab. Now, at some point in time, your daughter went to rehab as well, correct? Let me interrupt because yes, I'm trying to make a timeline here. Ms. Rodriguez, when do you say yes. that Austin just, quote, dropped him off because he was going to go to rehab? I need a date. Okay, um... The exact date, I'm not sure, but I want to say mid-July. Okay. All right. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Hamper. Go ahead. No, that, that's fine, Your Honor. So at that point in time, was CPS involved in this child's life? Yes. Okay. Did they know, to your knowledge, that Austin was dropping the child off at your house to be taken care of? Austin being part of he would tell me can't hear you. Could could you lean a little closer to your phone and repeat your answer, please, Veronica? I said um, because Austin was primary, he would he told me that he was a notifying CPS of everything that was going on. All right. So he was the primary caregiver, at least legally, yes. of the child. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And it was it your understanding that they knew what was going on. Yes. All right. Now, at some point in time, did your daughter go to rehab? Yes, she did. Uh, did she stay in rehab or did she leave rehab? No, she stayed in rehab. She was sober 50, I want to say 58 days. All right. Uh, as, as you say that, I assume at probably the 59th day, she became unsober. Is that right? I'm not really sure about that. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, d during this period of time, uh, in July and, and August, um, you continued to take care of the child when you could, correct? Yes. Okay. D were there other family members, either from your family or from his family, that were also taking care of the child? No. So is it is it your testimony that you were the primary a caregiver for this infant uh, while these two young adults were going through these drug problems? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, at some point in time, uh, CPS uh, came to your house and removed Jax from you, correct? No. Okay. Well, how did, um, how did the child end up, if you could explain to us, having been cared for you for during its early part of its life, how did it end up back either with his father or with his, the father's mother? 
Um, I was told by CPS to meet with the, that we were going to meet with the other grandmother and me, and we were going to make a plan for both of us, you know, to take care of Jax. And I had asked them if they wanted me to bring Jax, and she said no because she didn't want, you know, emotions or, you know, um, people getting upset. And I said, okay. So I made arrangements to for someone to take care of my grandson while I was going to this meeting. Well, then uh, later on on that day, they um, Elaine called me and told me to go ahead and bring Jax with me. Um, and I told him, okay. So I went and got him out of baby school or daycare. We went and had lunch, me and him, and then we went to the meeting. Was this and meeting we, at the CPS office? Yes, it was at the meeting at the CPS office. Okay. What transpired at the meeting? Um, when we got there, um, I had already talked to the father the day prior and he had already told me that he wanted to go with me to his lawyer's office to get papers drawn up because he was going to sign them over to me so I could be able to take them to the doctor's office and pick. And if I had questions at the daycare, they would be able to, you know, let me know anything I wanted to know because he I, a, I understand. Been, I don't. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I understand you, but if you can focus on my my questions, question. I, I'm easily distracted. Okay? okay, but my question to you. Hang on, Miss Rodriguez. I'm going to interrupt again. What, okay. what day? What day was this meeting scheduled for? September the thirtieth. Okay, thank you. I've got to have dates and all of this stuff, so that's why I keep interrupting. So okay. September the thirtieth was the day you had the meeting at CPS. Yes. Okay. And could you answer my question to the best of your recollection? Uh, what transpired in the meeting? What did you all talk Just about? That, in the meeting? that they um, we were meeting because they had allegations from Austin that I was a drug addict and alcoholic. <laughs> and um, they, before they we were, get off of that point, did you volunteer to have a hair strand test as a result of that accusation? Yes, a hair okay. uh, a hair follicle test and a P test. Okay, and okay. did either one of those go test positive? No, they were both negative. Okay, well, let's get back to the meeting then, because I'm sure you had the test after the meeting. But during the meeting, did you all discuss Jack's care? Yes. And what, what uh, transpired with respect to the relationship of all the parties during that meeting? Uh, they were going to take Jax from me and, and give him to the other grandmother, Misty O'Quinn. And, and tell, has, and has tell, Jax, has Jax been... Don't, don't interrupt each other. Has Jax been there since then? Yes. All right. Um, would you agree with me that at the time we filed this intervention that Due to the drug habits of your daughter and the biological father, um, the child would not need to be have placed with either one of them. No. Do you believe that the department knew that not only your daughter, but also the father were active drug users? Yes, because during that meeting, they knew he was on drugs and they still allowed him to tell them that he was removing them from me and giving them to his mom. All right. Do you have any idea based upon uh, knowledge that you've obtained as to why he would tell them that you were a drug user when you weren't just to get him from you to go to your mom, to his mom? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Sustained. Um, do you think that, would, would you agree with me that What he told them was incorrect about you being on drugs. Objection, leading, Your Honor. He's telling her the answers. Sustained. Well, you've testified here this morning that he told CPS that you were on drugs. Yes. And uh, you were asked to do a drug test, correct? I was. That they and did they tell you what they would do if you tested clean? Uh, yes, they your honor. You say what they said to you. Yeah, who's they? Okay. Uh, CPS. 
No, 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 no. Don't, don't answer yet, Miss Rodriguez. Mr. Hamker, who's they when you said, did they tell you? Did, did anyone that's with CPS or St. Francis tell you that they would return the child to you if you tested positive? Yeah, no that's that's your honor. Hearsay yeah. and oh, we, no, it's not hearsay. Department's a party, so you can answer that question, Miss Rodriguez. The supervisor Kelsey told me that if I took this drug test, the hair follicle drug test, and and if it came back negative, that she would personally apologize to me, and we would come back and make a new plan for me and Misty to care for Jax. Ms. Rodriguez, do you feel that it's in the best interest of your grandson that you be allowed to intervene and have additional contact with him? Yes. At the current time, you're only, to my knowledge, from the last hearing, you're getting one hour a week on Wednesdays. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you've met with the grandmother, uh, Mr. O'Quinn's mother. In fact, you went to lunch with her. And would she agree to let you come to her home and see the grandson? Objection. Speculation. Sustained. Uh, have there been attempts by you to see your grandson at the other grandmother's home? Yes, I've asked Misty to allow me to come see him at her home because he always cries whenever he has to leave with the CPS man. And he cries and it upsets me. So I told Misty that it would be, you know, I would think, you know, for Jax, if I would just go see him at her home, you know, where he can be, you know, nobody that he doesn't know picks him up and takes him home. And she told me that it, it she didn't think it was a good idea because she said that it was good. Her being in her home was going to take time from me, you know, with Jax. At this point in time, you've not been allowed to visit anywhere other than one hour a week at CPS. Correct. Okay. And hang on. We've lost Amy. Amy, I've got you in the waiting room. She must be frozen. She said it kicked her off, so she is back right. in the waiting room. Let's get, let's get our court reporter back. The last thing I got was whenever he has to leave with the CPS man, he cries and he cries. Okay. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, do you believe that the contact that you've had with your grandson, not only just once a week, but prior to the time that he was removed from you the end of September, that that contact was beneficial to his health and well-being? Yes. Uh, do you believe that any grandparent's contact with their grandchild would be beneficial? Of course. Yes, I do believe that. Um, do you love him? Yes, um, I do. Do you feel like it's necessary due to the relationship that you have with your grandson that you be allowed to be a party in this case? Yes, I just I want to be able to be a grandmother like her and help her and, you know, just be there for Jax. In, in fact, at this point in time, it's true, isn't it, that the grandparents are really the only people that can step into the parental roles regarding this child? Yes, sir. I mean, Your Honor, Your Honor I pass the witness. Hey, Mr. Alley? Ms. Rodriguez, I just want to make sure that I'm clear. Baby was born in June. Do you remember what the exact date? June 10th, 23. And then it was about three weeks before the baby was released from the hospital? Yes, sir. And when the child was released from the hospital, the child was released to Austin, the father? Yes, sir. And did you know that your daughter was using uh, fentanyl during the time that she was pregnant with this with Jax? No, she lived with him, so I hardly got to see her. Okay. And... Um, when Austin had the child, it's your testimony that that he brought the child to you occasionally and you went to see the child occasionally um, for a period of time. Yes. And then in August of 2023, um, the child was 
placed back in your in your home. Is that correct? Well, I was already seeing him back and forth in July. Okay, that's not my question, Mr. Rodriguez. The child was placed in your home in August of 2023. I'm not for sure the date, but it was I it was in August. I mean not not I had Jack's it, beginning of August. Okay. We already had Jack Marina's birthday is August 10th, and we already had him. Okay, that's what I'm asking you, Miss Rodriguez. Okay. And then, and, and, and part of that agreement that the, when the child was put in your home was that you were not to allow uh, unsupervised visits with the parents. Correct. Correct. Right. Yes. And then prior to September 30th, you were allowing unsupervised visits with Austin. Um, so that Austin could take the child and he and, and your daughter would have uh, possession of the child without your supervision. That's incorrect. I have not seen Austin since he left the baby with me. So so if, if, my, if I've been told by the department that you were allowing unsupervised visits, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Okay. <clears throat> I When I had the baby with me, I tried to take the baby to go see his father when my daughter was in rehab and he was always telling me he wasn't home or he wasn't, he was out of town and he couldn't see him. And objection so, order is non-responsive. This time, just answer the question that you're asked, Ms. Rodriguez. <clears throat> and Ms. Rodriguez, you're, you didn't, you have not had the child in your possession since September. Since September 30th. Okay. So, for 45 to 60 days was the amount of time that you had the child in your home. About, about two months. Okay. I'll pass witness, Sean. All right. Mr. Jackson. <clears throat> Thank you, Judge. Ms. Rodriguez, uh, earlier you had testified that Austin after the child was released to his father uh, and he went home, that Austin would bring this child over to you, to your home. Is, is that accurate? Yes. Okay. And when he brought Jax over, did he stay there with Jax or did he leave him with you alone? He just, he would just drop him off and just leave. He would okay. never stay. All right. And so for how long a period of time was Jax staying with you during that time alone with you? How long? Yes, ma'am. Would it be um, for the day? Would it be overnight? It would be for night, like two or three days. Okay, so he left him overnight with you? Yes. Okay. And during that time that the child was overnight with you, did you see to all the child's needs? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were there any health issues during that time with Jax? Nope, just getting up every two hours with him every night. Okay, and uh, just out of curiosity, when Jax was there with you at the home, was it just you and Jax, or was there somebody else in the home with you? It was just me and Jax, unless okay. his you know, Okay, and your testimony is that you were getting up about every two hours at night to see after this kid on? Yes, sir, every two hours okay. on the dot. All right. And so during that time, uh, you know, that you've started having Jax over right after the release to his father. And then after this child came into your care, did you develop a bond with that, with, with Jax? Yes. Yes, I did. And so did he. Okay. That's my next question is to the best of your ability. Can you say or articulate how you were able to tell that this child was developing a bond with you from what you observed? I was just. As soon as he would hear my voice, he would look for me or there was a certain way that I would rock him and I would just, the way I would put him to sleep, he would just, I mean, we just, you could just tell when I'd go pick him up at daycare, you can even ask the daycare people how he would just light up and just laugh and, you know. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, I believe that uh, your attorney had asked you, I think it was your attorney, that currently you're getting one hour of visitation a week now. Is that correct? 
Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And during the times that you get to exercise that visit, well, first of all, how long have you had that one hour a week visitation? Has that been since September? No. When did that start? Here, it started after. Started when? Started when? It started after Christmas. It was supposed to start like during Christmas, before Christmas, but it started after Christmas, like January, just barely. I think I've had like the whole month of January, maybe. Right. Right. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jackson. So you're telling me that from September 30th, when they removed Jax, you didn't get to see him until the start of this year? No. So the the first visit that I had when they took him away from me, I I could see him 15 minutes out of my daughter's time. The last 15 minutes of her visitation and the last time we saw him was in, on, Hall on Halloween. And then after that, we didn't see him no more until after Christmas. I got my I got me one hour on Wednesdays. What what caused you to stop having your 15 minutes after Halloween? They stopped it. CPS stopped it. Did they tell you why they stopped it? I need an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. No, they didn't. They just. Okay. Right. You've you answered my question. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jackson. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, so visitation picked back up or started again in January for an hour. Is that correct? Yes, sir. On Wednesdays. Okay. And have you made those visits consistently? Yes. Okay. And there so was from, one, go ahead. I was just going to say there was one Wednesday that I did not go because I had the cold and I went to the doctor and everything and I didn't want to give it to my grandson or get him sick. Okay. Just out of curiosity, did you ask for a makeup visitation? Uh, they told me that I, I uh, messaged um, the CPS. Um, no, the, the question oh, is, did, did you, excuse me. The question is, did you ask for a makeup visitation? That's a yes or no question answer. No. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Ms. Rodriguez, since your visitation picked up, you were talking earlier, testifying earlier about how you recognized Jack's bond with you. When you started those visitations back again, were you observing the same kind of experience with Jack's as far as his bond is concerned? And then began whenever I when, when CPS has him, he's crying. And as soon as he sees me, he goes to me and I hold him. And I'm, he sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That, that's a yes okay. or no answer also. I don't need a, a long drawn out explanation. So did I'm you, sorry. Did you experience the same, did he, the same that Mr. Jackson asked you as when you had had the visitation before? Yes. Okay. Did, did the child light up when he heard your voice? Yes. Does the crying stop when he hears your voice or sees you? Yes. Okay. And would it be in this child's best interest for him, for you to be more of a part of this child's life? Yes. Based on what you've observed? Yes, sir. Okay. Pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hill. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right. Anybody have follow-ups for Ms. Rodriguez? No, Your Honor. All right, uh, Mr. Hamker, did you have any other witnesses? Your Honor, no other witnesses. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Your Honor, the, the only, the only, I didn't really have a follow up, but if the court will remember, we had a hearing after the first of the year, and the court, that's when the court started allowing Miss Rodriguez the one hour on Wednesday, if I recall correctly. I, I, we had a hearing in, on January 12th. Let me see, we had one on uh, December 8th, too. It was at one of those two hearings that that's when she started having the one hour. Okay. I don't, I don't see that I ordered that, but that doesn't mean I didn't. My notes aren't always accurate. So, okay. All right, then. Um, let's see. Where were we? Mr. Alvey, witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. I All would right. have a brief statement. Okay, Mr. Mr. Jackson, witnesses? Yes, sir. I'll briefly call my client, Mariana Morrow. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Um. Marina, uh, you're you're the daughter of uh, Veronica Rodriguez. Yes. And you were present in the courtroom this morning when your mother testified. Is that right? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, the testimony that she put before the court is accurate. 
Yes. And uh, since uh, Jax had uh, was released from the hospital, have you had an opportunity to observe your mother with Jax? Absolutely. And what yeah. have you observed? What have you observed? She's amazing with him. Uh, my son, my son loves her. I've this... never felt like he was in harm's whenever he was with her. She, I mean, she treats him like he's hers. Did you notice Jax respond in a certain way when he heard your mother's voice? Absolutely. Anytime, anytime that she would come, he would, he would like, he, he would reach for her or, um, you know, she, she would, she helped me when I got to have him unsupervised visits. She helped me put him to sleep because I, um, you know, I, I had to put him, he would only sleep a certain way and he was comfortable enough with her. She would do it that way. Okay. I mean, does, does your mother have the ability to soothe that child and get in Jack's to sleep and calm Jack's? Yes. And do you think it'd be in Jack's best interest to have more access to your mother? Yes. And are you asking the court to allow that? Yes, please. And asking the court to allow your mother to be a part of this suit. Yes, please. And do you believe do you believe that to be in Jack's best interest? Yes. Okay, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Alvey. I don't have any questions, Your Honor. Mr. Hill. No questions. Mr. Hanker. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right, Mr. Jackson. Any other witnesses? No, no witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Hill, witnesses. Mr. Hill? Sorry, I couldn't get it done mute. No, sir. Okay, Mr. Ingram, witnesses. No witnesses. All right. All right, then. Uh, if everyone address, then uh, Mr. Ingram, recommendation. Judge, I don't have any position on the intervention, uh, and I have no objection to increased contact uh, with the maternal grandmother and the child. Okay. All right, give me just a second. Let me ask whoever knows the answer to this. Are the parents, I, I've heard that the mother's visiting. Is is Mr. O'Quinn visiting the child? Anyone? Your Honor, I can answer that. Um, the parent, neither parent are having visits right now uh, due to uh, the fentanyl use. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. O'Quinn has not been cooperative at all and has not drug screened at all. Okay. Uh, Miss Morrow is still testing positive for fentanyl, so she is not um, uh, having any contact either. Okay, that's that answered my question. Thank you. Your, Your, Honor, Honor, I, Your Honor, if I for, might furthermore add to that, I believe uh, Mr. O'Quinn may not be able to because I believe he was arrested by APD last week for drugs. Is he incarcerated currently or do you know that? He may have bonded out. I, I believe he did bond out, sir. Okay. Judge, judge I, I would question that. I, I know he, uh, yesterday when I spoke to him, he said he'd had, he was questioned by police, but he did not indicate that he was arrested or charged with anything. So I, I will dispute the fact or the, the, the allegations that he was arrested. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to take that as testimony. So, uh, noted Mr. Hill. Your Honor, All right. if, if, I'm, if I may, uh, pursuant to the temporary order that was entered December the 8th, it's my understanding that order that once uh, Ms. Morrow uh, tests negative for a UA, that the visits would resume. And she had tested on December the 8th and uh, ordered to test, which she did. And the results of that have not been filed. And she tested again on January the 12th for a hair follicle UA. And those test results hadn't been filed that we can see. Hey, well, then I, there's nothing before me then today that I would, that would change my ruling. So, okay. Um, Ms. Rodriguez. You can, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yes, sir. I want to just recap briefly and be sure I understood what you told me. Um, you said uh, Jax was born June 10, was in the hospital three to four weeks, and you would see him daily, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And then next you said then when Mr. O'Quinn took him, he would ask you for help to care for him. He'd drop him off sometimes, and uh, you said he didn't stay. But that went on from the time that Jax got out of the hospital until that meeting on September 30th. Is that was that your testimony? Yes. OK. And then since the removal, you started out with the 15 minutes. You had some time in there when they, you weren't allowed anything. And then beginning in January, you started an hour visit, correct? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the I want to be sure I understood this correctly. I think, I don't know if you answered this for Mr. Hamker or maybe Mr. Alvey. You said that you knew you were not to allow the parents to have an authorized visits with Jax. Did, did you answer yes to that? Did I know that? They, I wasn't supposed to. Yes, sir. Okay. And do you admit that you did allow the parents to have some unauthorized contact with Jax? I did not allow that. Okay. Do you remember what what day Jax was actually placed in your home? Not the actual date, no, sir. You know what month? Jax got out of the hospital in uh, uh, um, June. I, I want to say by the end of July. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, then. Uh, based on the evidence I've heard today, I'm going to grant uh, Ms. Rodriguez's amended petition for leave to intervene, which necessarily means that I have to deny the motion to strike filed by the department. The only other thing I'm going to rule on today is uh, since the parents are not visiting and Jack's getting to spend most of his time with paternal grandmother, I'm going to order that Ms. Rodriguez have two hours weekly visitation with Jax. That may not seem like enough, but uh, grandparents, that there's only so many people that can supervise these visits. So CPS and St. Francis have their boat loaded. So uh, that's about all I'm willing to do, not knowing what the HST schedules are. So, okay. Our next hearing will be a permanency hearing that's scheduled for August 30th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go. That can't be right. For No, I'm sorry. I, I was reading the wrong one. Our next hearing is the initial permanency hearing. That's on May 6th, 2024. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance of May 6th to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I would just ask the court to consider that if my client has, in fact, uh, tested uh, for dinner, drug test is ordered on December the 8th and January the 12th, which have not been filed with the court, I would ask the court to order the department to file those results, please. I will order the department to file all test results from both parents for every test that they take. So, Thank you. All right. OK, I appreciate your patience. I apologize for starting so late. We will stand in recess and I don't know who may be involved. OK, Judge, I have Miss Yarbrough present by phone through my office line. All right. OK, then where do we stand? Judge, at this time, the Department of Family and Protective Services would like to announce that there's been an agreement reached. This is a Texas family first case, in which case we're asking that Ms. Yarborough work services through a family plan of service that has been signed and filed with the court. That family plan of service includes services such as parenting, um, regular medical checkups, uh, counseling um, for her and her children. Um, with that, Your Honor, we would ask the court to approve that family plan of service and leave the children currently in Ms. Yarborough's care. All right. Then, in addition, when I read the report, it also asked for anger management and the intensive family-centered treatment services through TFF. Is that also? It, those would also be in that family plan of service. All right. That's all I saw in there as far as requests for the mother and the children. So, Ms. Seal, is this your client's agreement? Yes, Your Honor. And she has signed the uh, family plan of service on February 7th. Okay, great. Ms. Grant, are you in agreement? Yes, Your Honor, I'm in agreement. All right, then. Then I will approve that agreement. I'll order Ms. Yarbrough to work the services that have just been announced and is set out in the department's petition. Uh, let me grab Mr. Alvey. Did you want a compliance hearing? Um, 60 days, Your Honor. Okay. I've got uh, April 12th. That will work, Your Honor. Okay. Then I will set a compliance hearing for April 12th, 2024. It will be by Zoom, just like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance of April 12th to see exactly what time we'll have that hearing. So, all right. I appreciate y'all working that out. Sorry for being late. And this was our last hearing uh, this morning. So we will stand in recess. Everybody have a good weekend.